So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Welcome to my Apple iPhone 11, December 2022 review. Now let's begin by just going and checking out the current price points. I like to go to eBay because eBay is kind of like the market where people are selling it themselves. So let's kind of get an idea of that really quickly. So you can see people are running this thing to you for around 233, 294, depending on the storage, the condition max about 300 bucks. Now you're getting quite a bit for that price. Let me begin by talking about what you're getting here with software. You are getting the latest version of 16.2. And I was planning on making a video about some of the, my favorite new features. So let me know if you want to see that but it includes an all new application called Freeform. You could sing along with Siri and stuff like that. So, or with Apple Music actually, with karaoke, but pretty cool. You can see, get creative. There are new features here. And even though this phone came out four years ago, well, we're going into the fourth year in 2019, we're still in three. This phone right here is still a very good device. So we're gonna talk now about the display. I want to reference over here to the iPhone 14 model here, and that's because the iPhone 14 is a model that basically is the current day version of the iPhone 11. And it's not quite as popular as the iPhone 11 was because not only is the price kind of high compared to what you can get with the competition, but it hasn't really upgraded so substantially that it it's just not as interesting. When the iPhone 11 came out, it was a nice upgrade over the already popular iPhone XR, giving you the dual camera setup, whereas we've seen this with the 12, the 13. So this one's not quite as exciting. However, it's still a really good upgrade if you have the iPhone 11, but just take a look. Generally, day to day, your experience is gonna be nearly identical in a lot of areas here with the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 14, sans the notch being a little bit smaller there on the iPhone 14. Now I will tell you that the 6.1 inch LCD is noticeably worse than some OLED displays here in 2022 in December. You definitely can see the different contrast ratios. It's kind of similar to in the TV game when if you pay a little bit more for a nicer TV, you get that nicer quality. Same thing here with this one, it's just not quite as sharp. So do keep that in mind. However, that doesn't mean this display is not usable. It's still a nice LCD panel. It still does give you, you know, if you don't like OLED, it still gives you that ability to avoid the PWM on here. And honestly, I can still open up Apple News. I can still open up applications and I can still read content just fine. So I'm not really overly concerned about recommending this if you wanna pick up your first iPhone at a low price point. It's not the worst out there. It's definitely not the best, but it's not the worst. In terms of the body here in December 2022, the body still feels nice. It's got the aluminum edges. It's very similar to what we see these days. And the back glass is also quite similar to the iPhone 14. Now you can see at the bottom, we do have the lightning port here and we still have the lightning port here. So not much has changed in that respect. And you can see the button still nice and tactile. Overall, I still think it's a nice looking phone. It has curved edges as well. So it's kind of easy to hold. Although the bezels on the edges of this phone also do feel a little bit thicker than the current ones. So that's a big upgrade. Look how thin the bezel action is on the side versus the iPhone 11. But when you're using an iPhone day to day, does it really matter? Do you really look at the bezels? Not too much. You're just kind of immersed in the content and whatever it is that you are doing on that phone. So I would say overall build design held up very well. It doesn't look like some archaic dinosaur. It looks very nice here in 2022. Just doesn't look like the latest because it doesn't have the squared edges. Now when it comes to performance, we are looking at the Apple A13 Bionic chipset. That is coupled with four gigs of RAM. So don't expect, you know, the best multitasking experience, whereas, you know, you might get some reloads here and there on this phone. But when you do go ahead and just open things up, overall, it's not terrible. It's actually pretty darn good. And um, it's actually better than the 10R. I remember if you watched my 10R review here in 2022 for December, I also was not overly impressed, but I was not disappointed with its performance. So this one being a little bit faster is a great thing. 
Long story short, the iPhone 11 can run all the applications that you need here in 2022, which is a testament to Apple's longevity with their devices. But here's the good thing about it too. This phone also doesn't get too warm. I mean, it's warmer than when it first came out, but it doesn't get too warm by comparison to the 10R I found. Apple A13 Bionic is the better chip, obviously. And of course, it's not gonna benchmark like a newer phone, but you can go ahead and do, again, what you need to do day to day. You can see right there, there can be some stutters from time to time, but that could have just been me doing that wrong. But I gotta say, the performance here in December, if you're looking to pick one up or maybe you're looking to get one for someone else, it's not really bad at all. Actually, it's super usable day to day. Now, switching gears over to the camera system, this is one of the areas that gave the iPhone 11 some really good longevity, mostly because even the current iPhones still employ a dual camera setup. So if I back it out here, you can see that, let's go ahead and get that in there, the Christmas tree, and you could see it still gives you nice results. It's still a phone that I'm gonna enjoy taking photos with on the day to day. And I really like that because it, and because it means that if you're paying 300 bucks, look what you're getting, like you're getting really good results. And then if you go to video, you're getting an amazing results. So I think it's pretty incredible how low you can spend in 2022 at this point and still get ridiculously good video quality. That's one of the good things about buying a secondhand iPhone is if you want to get into photography and video, these cameras age very well and they just look really good. And you don't have to know a lot about camera systems to start your content on whatever platform you want to start on. Or even if you want to take photos of family and stuff like that, video and things, you don't really need to have go buy a thousand dollar phone to get a really good camera. You just don't have to do that. Front facing camera also solid because it matches the rear. The photo also very solid here as well because again matches the rear. They only slightly upgraded this here in the 2022 iPhone 14. So it's a little bit more HDR looking. It's a little bit more crispy. I think I look a little more yellow on the iPhone 14 as well, but it hasn't been majorly, it hasn't been majorly upgraded by comparison to the 11. It's just a little bit. So definitely that's still a win. That's still a go for the iPhone 11 as well. Sound quality has been improved on the current iPhones, but this is still usable. So that's again, not a big issue. Battery life is something we have to talk about. And I could say confidently that the battery life on here, it's not as strong as it was initially when it first came out, but unlike the ProMotion iPhones, where if you put on low power mode, you get the 60 Hertz panel. On the 11, if you put on low power mode, you basically are still gonna get, you know, a really good battery life and you already have 60 Hertz, so it doesn't jar the experience at all. I can get easily through a day. And if I'm not using the phone all day long, I can go into the second day. So not a bad battery life at all. I mean, it's not huge, it's only a 3110, but you know how efficient iOS can be. So here in December, I'm happy with that. And remember, you're still getting iMessage and all this stuff here. Now there are other options on the market like the Pixel 6a and stuff like that are a lot newer than this phone, but if you wanna run iOS, you want the latest software and you want something like 300 and less, this is a steal of a phone right here and it comes in multiple colors like black, green, yellow, purple, red, white. So there's a, lo a lot of options for you. But iPhone 11, I can confidently say in December of 2022, this phone is still a go. If you're looking for a used pickup iPhone, your first iPhone, you're trying to maybe get a deal on one. This is a winner right here. It really was at the time and it still is. I actually kind of liked it more than this 14 because they just had more upgrades at this time than they did with this one. So this just feels like a better evolution of the 11, but not quite as exciting. This one was exciting when it came out. And to this day, I still appreciate, I still think it's a pretty good phone. So if you have one, don't feel disappointed. We are missing out on 5G. We are missing out on the squared edges, OLED display. But you know, a lot of people like to trash the display in the comments because in the market, there's a lot of premium displays that just you know take a dump all over the iPhone 11 in their opinions. but there's no more LCD iPhones really. So if you want a bigger LCD iPhone, here you go. This is gonna be your move. Let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 11 here in December, 2022. And if you wanna see more content like this, be sure to let me know down below in the comments section. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to be well. I'll catch you all in the very next episode.
and peace.